Hello, my name is Stefan, and in this lecture, we are about to explore a technique that involves leveraging the stack to manage memory addresses. So this method might sound intricate, but I will break it down step by step. So at its core, this technique is fairly straightforward. However, we will face two specific challenges along the way. The first challenge revolves around the fact that we are limited to pushing only four bytes into the stack in a single operation. But worry not, we've got a powerful tool at our disposal to address this. Registers. So registers are like mini storage units within the processor and we will use them to efficiently manage our data. And the second challenge is the need to arrange strings in reverse order before we push them onto the stack. So this might seem a bit perplexing, but we will make use of Python to simplify the process. So now let's consider uh, creating our Python application step by step. Actually, we will not create a Python application uh, in uh, reality here, but what we're gonna do is we will just use the Python console. And here, let's actually create our string. So let's name it the string malware injected here again with stack method. This is our string. And after that, we will use the new line. And now we will go to Python, which is specifically Python 2. And here Python 2.7.18. Now what we're going to do is we will first define the string here, not this here string in this case we will name it uh, let's actually use this uh, malware injected with stack method new line so malware injected with stack method and after that new line without space why do we need space in new lines yeah and after that enter so we defined the string here and now what we're gonna do is we will reverse this string so string string here and string so we will use this double uh, characters and minus one to reverse the string not this here and now let's print the string and as you can see here we reverse the string dot them that's and yeah this is the reversed uh, form of string so if you read it from right to left by characters malware injected with stacks method and new line and now we will need to encode the string. So we will use um, encode to hex in one line using this. So string, or actually let's create hex here. So we will use this reverse string, which is already reversed here. And we will use string dot hex. And in this parenthesis, we will write hex. That's it, and we got an error here. So it's true as an attribute hex so because we need to actually also yeah we will need to instead of writing as encode here and that's it so now let's actually print hex and this is our hex value for this now let's copy this paste it here that's it so um, as you can see here as i said uh, we we are limited to just pushing four uh, four bytes into the stack in single operation, right? So what we're gonna do is we will uh, select split this hex by 16 bits, uh, 16 hex numbers here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Here, so this is 16 per line here. So here we have this second here and third. Yes. Now we can uh, write our program since we split it now what we're gonna do is so and the this encoded string is essential for our assembly programming and uh, it might appear complex at first but 
by breaking down into manageable steps and using Python's capabilities, we are setting the stage for seamless implementation of this stack-based technique. So we will now open our Visual Studio code. Let's right-click on it, new file, and stack method.asm, that's it. So now what we're going to do, we will declare the uh, entry point uh, of the program as the start. Start. And after that, what's oh, actually a global start here, global start, we will create a text section containing the actual program code, section text here. And after that, we will um, write start, that program starts executing uh, from this start label. And now what we're going to do is we will uh, clear the racks register firstly, so XOR racks, racks. And we will also uh, syscall number for write, so add racks one, and we will uh, set RDI to racks here, which is the file descriptor one for standard output racks. And that's it here. So we have done with it. Now we need to push the strings onto the stack in reverse order. So push strings onto the stack in reverse order and this is our strings here so we will uh, move rbx push rbx move rbx push rbx so until uh, our list uh, lines here is ended so let's actually make it always on top write it here open uh, visual studio on the left side and let's try writing our code so move move rbx here and before every of these uh, hex characters, we will use 0x to notify the assembly that we are, uh, this is the hex and not some weird uh, uh, characters here. So rbx, let's firstly copy this here. Yes, and now after that, we will need to push the rbx, pu not here, push, push rbx. Actually, we will also add new lines here. Yeah, perfect. And after that, we will move the RBX again. RBX here. This is going to be something in the third line. No, after, uh, after pushing RBX, we don't need to enter anything here. Uh, after pushing, sorry for this. And now we will enter the second here. And now again, we will push here because Firstly, we are loading and then we pushing here. So you don't have to write anything on push. And if you write something after the REX, you will get an error at the assembly phase. So push and now we will move RBX here again. This. Not here. Oh, I discovered a new thing here. So if you click the this here uh, you will paste it automatically the mouse, mouse scroll button here yeah. cool function and here push here and one two three now we will get this fourth here push rbx here and move rbx again this and lastly this one again we will push this rbx and move RBX again. That's it. And after that, of course, we need to push this one to RBX. That's it. Perfect. And now we will uh, set the program to exit here. And add, but but before we will uh, move the RSI. Uh, so we will set RSI to point to the top of the stack. So move RSI RSP and XOR. RDX, RDX, which this is for clearing the RDX register, and this is which is the uh, length of the string here. And we will now add RDX, which is the uh, this is for the length of the combined string. So add RDX here, 37. No, no, not 37 here. Let's actually test this here. Yeah, we can't do that with Python. So my length here and this. Here, 
here and uh, length dot len or len length here yeah it's it's uh, 35 so after 35 we will do plus one uh, which is 36 for the null uh, termination character for the string and after that we will add one character for each of this one two three four five but before adding this, it's actually, let's count this as 36. 36 here. And let's see what happens. And after that, we will do that easily here. Just, cha just changing this character, this uh, RDX value here. And now we will perform the syscall to print the string, syscall. And after that, we will clear the Rex register again. Not this, yeah. XOR racks racks and uh, add RDX. No, uh, add RX racks, uh, uh, add racks 60. This is for the Cisco number for exit. And after that, we will XOR RDI R, RDI. Yeah. RDI, RDR, and then uh, we will just use this syscall. That's it. Here. And uh, now, uh, as I explained this uh, code line by line, I will do that again. But before that, let's actually uh, use the NASM to assemble and then link our program with LD here. So NASM, no, we need to go to, to that directory, sources, shell, and ls. Yeah. We have the stack method at ASM and NASM FL64 stack method stack method dot ASM output file is gonna be stack method dot o here LD and as you can see it's assembled perfectly without any errors or warnings so hello world uh, no not hello world <laughs> so stack uh, method dot o here and this is our this is gonna be our executable file in this case. Let's name it stack here, stack exploit. Yeah, sounds right. Stack exploit. And that's it. So as you can see here, as I said, so met, met, one, two, no, one, two, three, four. As I said, so we have a four one here. So we don't, we don't count this first one as here because we don't have anything before this and that's why we will start counting here one two three four so plus four this is for end and or terminator and this is for the line splits line splits minus one which is let's actually instead of using parentheses because this might be look some mathematical error here so we will use the codes here again let me see if that's recording here yeah perfect and also we will add this here to here and yeah 35 uh, 36 plus, so 40 total and yeah let's actually go to no we don't want to save it just don't want on top always yeah so we will change it to 40 and here we will compile it and ld and that's it and as you can see here we both have the new line and method here so we created this shellcode perfectly and executed it so but before that now i will explain this here so the code starts similarly to previous examples by clearing the reg register and setting it to one which corresponds to a syscall number for write and uh, we have the move rda racks uh, instruction to uh, for setting up the file descriptor for standard output which is rda one and uh, here after this we are pushing uh 
quote several strings onto the stack in reverse order using this push instruction and each string is represented as a series of bytes and after pushing the strings onto the stack the move rsi uh, rsp instruction sets up rsi uh, to point to top of the stack and where the combined message is located and xor rdx rdx here is uh, as always uh, clears the rdx register and then adds rdx uh, 40 instruction uh, sets it 40 uh, which is the length of this combined message with the splits new lines null terminators and so on and uh, the syscall instruction uh, performs a syscall to print the combined message and then uh, as we always do we is this code then performs the exit call to terminate the program similar to previous examples let's actually uh, delete that and uh, run it again we will not get an error but and as you can see we got uh, segmentation fault but our program is still terminated so we need that and this assembly code demonstrates how to print multiple lines of message to console using syscalls and the strings are constructed on the stack in reverse order and then printed with appropriate syscalls so the usage of registers stack manipulation and syscalls is consistent with this common assembly programming practices to inter interact with operating system and perform specific tasks and initially we encounter an action where we are pushing uh, 8 bytes on the stack so now you might wonder why we are not pushing the remaining bytes one by one or even in groups of five four bytes so here's the beauty of it so we have a more efficient approach we can utilize registers which are like temporary storage units in the processor to perform this operation in a single swift move so imagine you are transferring a pile of eight bytes from one place to another instead of moving them one by one you can grab all eight at once if you got a large enough container and in our case these containers are registered so and they empower us to transport more data at once so the subsequent step involves pushing the content of that register onto the stack so this is where the magic yeah sorry for this yeah so this is where the magic happens here so instead of tediously pushing each individual byte we are moving a more substantial chunk of data from registers onto the stack all in one go so this efficiency enhances the speed and elegance of our code so through the clever combination of pushing eight bytes to the stack and the smart utilization of registers we are optimizing the process of transferring data streamline streamlining our code and achieving efficient result so this is a prime example of how strategic how strategic decisions with encoding can lead to improved performance and cleaner execution fantastic so you've wrapped up our lecture with a clear roadmap for the next steps in our upcoming session we are diving into the practical application of what we have been learning so we will start by assembling and linking which <laughs> sorry but we did this in this lecture and we will do our shell code so this process will transition us from raw code to an executable program <laughs> which is, we, we can call this like malware for ethical hacking <laughs> but that's not all so we are taking it step further by extracting the shell code from our assembler program and we will interact it into a c code so this interaction bridges the gap between theory and hands-on practice allowing us to see our efforts come to life so that's it with our lecture as we continue on this journey of assembly programming and shellcode development until our next lecture keep your curiosity and enthusiasm high i'm waiting you in next lecture my name is typhoon is this microphone running yeah perfect i thought i was recording it again bye